What's happening right now here, it's the cover of the Chrysler that's being built here that you see up top. A twisted metal ring in Greifswald, Germany, just held a piece of the sun steady. And that changes the fusion story. Wendelstein 7X looks like a sci-fi sculpture, but its magnets trap plasma hotter than anything we can touch. The team kept that plasma stable for eight minutes. Eight minutes of watching a calm, well-behaved plasma instead of a violent one. That is the difference between a lab demo and a future power plant. In this video, we'll explain what W7X achieved, why Stellarators differ from Tokamaks, and how Proxima Fusion plans to turn it into electricity for everyone. The machine that refuses to touch the wall. Fusion fails the moment plasma hits a solid surface. Plasma at tens of millions of degrees would melt steel like paper. So Wendelstein 7X does something clever. It never lets the plasma touch the wall at all. It uses 50 superconducting magnets, each with a unique bent shape to build a magnetic tunnel in space. The magnets sit near minus 270 degrees Celsius, colder than deep space, while the plasma inside can reach over 20 million degrees, sometimes higher. The parts must be aligned within about a millimeter, even though they weigh tons. German engineers built new tools and robots just to position and check them. This is why the machine looks like a twisted sculpture. That twist is not for style. It is how a stellarator keeps charged particles circling in stable paths. If you get the geometry right, the plasma stays smooth and predictable. If you get it wrong, it leaks heat, wiggles and dies. That is why early stellarators scared most countries away. They were hard to design, hard to build, and easy to ruin with one tiny error. Germany decided to take the hard path anyway, starting planning in the 1990s and spending years turning computer designs into real metal. Sun in a bottle minus the sun's gravity. The sun does not burn like fire. It fuses. In its core, pressure and gravity squeeze hydrogen so tightly that nuclei slam together and become helium. A small bit of mass turns into energy. That is why one kilogram of fusion fuel can hold the energy of millions of kilograms of fossil fuel. On Earth, the most common plan is to fuse deuterium and tritium, two forms of hydrogen. Deuterium is in seawater. Tritium is rare, but a reactor can make its own by using lithium in a surrounding blanket. The catch is temperature. To get nuclei close enough, the fuel must be heated to around 100 million degrees Celsius. At that heat, atoms break into plasma, a charged gas that acts like smoke with a mind of its own. It writhes, it forms waves, and it finds the smallest weakness in your magnetic trap. You cannot solve that with thicker metal, because any wall contact cools the plasma instantly and ends the reaction. So, fusion scientists try to float plasma inside magnetic fields, like an invisible bottle. This is why stable plasma matters so much. Fusion is not just about reaching a hot peak for a blink. A power plant must hold useful conditions for a long time, while adding fuel and removing waste heat. When W7X holds plasma steady for minutes, it proves the bottle can stay sealed. Two paths, one big problem. By the 1960s, fusion research split into two main designs. Tokamaks use external magnets, but they also run a strong electric current through the plasma. That current helps twist the magnetic field and tighten the trap. Tokamaks are simpler to draw, simpler to model, and easier to manufacture in a clean, symmetric shape. That is why most countries bet on them, and why so many headlines mention tokamak projects. But the plasma current is also a weakness. It can trigger sudden events called disruptions, where the current collapses and the plasma slams into the wall. Even if nothing catastrophic happens, the machine must stop, cool, and restart. That makes pulsed operation normal for tokamaks. A city grid does not like pulses. It likes steady, boring power. Stellarators try to avoid that trap. They create the twist using only external coils. No big plasma current is needed, so disruptions are not built into the design. In theory, a stellarator can run continuously as long as you keep heating it and feeding fuel. The idea goes back to physicist Lyman Spitzer, who built early stellarator work at Princeton in 1951. The problem was always complexity. The coils are not copies. 
every coil is special. For decades, that seemed like too much risk. Wendelstein 7X exists because Germany believed the reward was worth the pain. The breakthrough runs and the hidden tricks behind them. The headline number that grabbed people was 8 minutes of stable plasma. That is not 8 minutes of chaos. It is 8 minutes where the plasma stayed controllable and predictable, long enough that scientists had to sit and watch it, not just capture a quick graph. Long shots like that are exactly what a future plant needs. Before reaching multi-minute stability, W7X hit another major milestone on May 22nd, 2025. The team held plasma at record performance for 43 seconds and pushed the triple product, a combined measure of density, temperature, and energy confinement time, to about 321. That matters because it matched or beat long pulse performance levels once held by larger tokamaks that used more heating power. A big piece of the win came from fueling. Oak Ridge National Laboratory built a pellet injector that fires tiny frozen hydrogen pellets, about a millimeter wide, into the plasma. During the record run, about 70 to 90 pellets were used. Fueling sounds simple, but it is a balancing act. Too many pellets cool the plasma. Too few and the plasma thins out. For the first time, the team used changing pulse rates, adjusting pellet timing to what the plasma needed in real time. Heating also mattered. Microwave systems drove the temperature above 20 million degrees Celsius, with peaks near 30 million. Teams across Europe helped with models, fast cameras, and control tools, coordinated through Eurofusion. The lesson is clear. The machine is not just a sculpture. It is a living system, and it is finally learning how to hold itself steady. From lab success to a real power plant called Stellaris. Wendelstein 7X was built as a physics experiment, not a generator. It will never plug into the grid, but its data is gold, and that is why a new company was formed around it. In 2023, researchers connected to the Max Planck Plasma Program helped launch Proxima Fusion. Their idea is blunt. Take what W7X proved, redesign the Stellarator with modern computing, and aim directly at electricity. In early 2025, Proxima revealed a commercial Stellarator concept called Stellaris in a peer-reviewed publication. The promise is continuous operation and built-in stability, not short pulses. Stellaris also leans on high-temperature superconducting magnets. Traditional superconductors need extreme cold, close to absolute zero. High-temperature superconductors still need cooling, but they can work around minus 196 degrees Celsius, which is far easier to manage. Stronger magnets let the whole reactor shrink, and smaller means cheaper, faster to build, and easier to repeat. Proxima's roadmap is aggressive, but clear. A test magnet is planned around 2027. A demo machine called Alpha aims to start around 2031, with the goal of net energy in a steady state. If that works, Stellaris could follow in the mid to late 2030s as a 1 gigawatt plant, enough to power roughly three quarters of a million homes. The key claim is that the design uses materials and supply chains that exist today, so the bottleneck is engineering, not magic. Why this changes the energy conversation? Fusion earns attention because it attacks three problems at once. Clean power, reliable power, and long-term fuel. Deuterium is spread through the oceans. Tritium can be bred from lithium inside the reactor. In a working plant, fuel could arrive by truck instead of pipeline, and one batch could run for a long time. Fusion also looks different from fission in terms of safety. A fusion plasma holds only a few grams of fuel at any moment. If the magnets fail, the plasma hits the wall, cools instantly, and the reaction stops. There is no chain reaction to run away. Waste exists, but it is mostly in the materials around the plasma that get activated by neutrons. The goal is to use materials that decay to much lower levels within decades, roughly 50 to 100 years instead of the multi-thousand year timelines people fear from fission waste. And because the fuel cycle is different, fusion does not fit the classic weapons pathway that drives so much political resistance. The climate need makes the timing urgent. Solar and wind are vital, but they are not always on. Batteries help, yet heavy industry also needs steady, high heat for steel, cement, and chemicals. 
A fusion plant naturally makes huge amounts of heat, and that heat can be turned into electricity, and also fed to nearby factories. That is why steady state matters as much as net energy. No None of this happens without long-term public investment. Germany and Europe spent over a billion euros building W7X, so private companies could learn from it. Now, Tokamax, Stellarators, and many startups are racing at once. The next decade will tell us which design reaches the grid first, but W7X has made one thing hard to ignore. Continuous fusion is no longer just theory. Fusion is not a single eureka moment. It is a long chain of calm, repeatable wins. Wendelstein 7X just proved that a stellarator can hold hot plasma steady for minutes, and even push record performance without the tokamak disruption trap. That opens a realistic path to machines that run like real power plants. If Proxima's magnets, Alpha, and Stellaris hit their targets, the 2030S could bring the first steady fusion electricity. We are not holding the sun yet, but we are learning how to build the bottle. Stay curious and keep watching. That could reshape energy for the whole planet.